Hi, I'm Mark Church, Product Manager at Google, and I'm going to teach you about the Kubernetes Gateway API and how it's evolving service networking in Kubernetes. Service networking is the portion of Kubernetes that involves exposing or publishing your pods on a network so that they can be accessed by other clients. There are very simple ways of doing this within the cluster and then more complex ways that expose your Kubernetes apps to clients running outside the cluster or even on the public internet. The ingress and service load balancer resources are typically used for these functions today, but a new standard called the Gateway API is emerging to, to evolve this area of Kubernetes networking. So the Gateway API is a specification or standard, which means that projects and companies that support it must adhere to it. This promotes portability and reusability because many different implementations have the same user interfaces. At this point in time, there are many contributors to this API and the list continues to grow. These contributions also have implementations of the API though through what are called gateway controllers. Gateway controllers manage underlying load balancers which can be anything from cloud managed load balancers to in-cluster software proxies. But first, let's take a look at the Ingress API and what it does for Kubernetes today. So just like, the just like gateway resources, an Ingress configures underlying load balancer. This ingress manifest tells the load balancer to match traffic going to foo.example.com. And if the URL has a slash v2 path, then the traffic will be sent to the foo v2 service. Otherwise, the rest of the traffic will be sent to the foo v1 service. This is how Kubernetes users can control HTTP traffic matching and load balancing in a Kubernetes native way without having to directly manage a load balancer configuration. Furthermore, if the pods in one of these services change, the ingress controller dynamically updates the load balancer configuration so that it always has an up-to-date state of its backends. So one valid question might be, why do we need a new API to do the same thing? The ingress resource supports some basic HTTP routing semantics, and this includes HTTP host, path matching, TLS termination, and routing to service backends. But in terms of flexibility, it doesn't offer a lot of ways to evolve this API to support more advanced capabilities. So this is where the Gateway API has taken the lessons from Ingress and also the Service Mesh community on, on up-leveling the Kubernetes native resources that we use to model service networking. The Gateway API adds support for HTTP header matching and manipulation, weighted traffic uh, splitting, mirroring, a role-oriented resource model, and much more. It also has extensibility and extension points built natively into the API for future enhancements. It supports referencing arbitrary CRDs as backends, which enables a route to point to other Kubernetes resources that might represent something like a storage bucket or a function. It also uses a layered API, which allows different kinds of route resources to exist. For example, a gRPC route could exist in the future, which provides gRP-specific matching and routing semantics. It also has granular extension points within the API for implementation specific behavior like load balancing algorithms or custom match types. So this allows custom behavior to be layered on top while still using the same core API resources. And these capabilities all line up with the gateway API conformance levels, which require the core capabilities to be supported for all implementations, require extended capabilities to be portable if they're implemented, and allow custom capabilities to be non-portable. So what does the gateway API look like? So just as there were ingress controllers which manage network infrastructure on behalf of the ingress resources, there are gateway controllers that manage the network infrastructure on behalf of gateway resources. There are one or more gateway classes that are supported by a gateway controller. These are like templates that explicitly define the behavior when using, uh, when using one of the gateways created from the gateway class. Gateways are created from gateway classes, and they model the actual network infrastructure which processes the traffic, so your actual load balancer. Uh, they may model a load balancer, but gateways are designed to be abstract, and so they can model many different kinds of data planes that perform routing. So finally, you have route resources. In this case, we're talking about the HTTP route, which defines configuration applied to a gateway. You can see that together, the gateway and the HTTP route resources do what the ingress resource does as a single resource. This separation allows different roles to deploy and own that resource. It allows a cluster administrator to manage the gateway and the policies attached to that gateway, while individual development teams manage the routing to their application on their own. 
So this separation also allows many different teams to share the same gateway resources even across namespace boundaries. This allows platform administrators to centrally control who has access to the gateway and the policies on that gateway while delegating routing control in a distributed way to different teams. So I hope I've taught you something about the gateway API. It's designed to be role oriented, expressive and extensible and also generic. So that it has flexibility to be used by diverse organizations and implemented across a diverse set of gateway controllers. So this helps it still retain its core portabil portability for future use cases as well. Check out other videos to learn more detail about how the Gateway API works in practice. I'm Mark Church, and thank you for watching.